Welcome to part three in the series, where I teach you how to build perfect buttons in After Effects. In part one, we created percentage-based rounding corners on a box. In part two, we created individually rounding corners. And in this video, we'll finally add text to our button. Picking up where we left off, select the text tool and type perfect button. With the align panel, align it to the center of the screen. Select the box layer to see its effects and lock the effect controls window so it doesn't go away. We want this box size effect to always match the size of our text layer automatically. Alt click on the stopwatch for box size and pick whip the text layer to add it to the expression field. This will be our target layer. Let's save it to a variable called target layer and then add a new line. Write const w equals target layer dot source rect at time dot width. Then on a new line, write const h equals target layer dot source rect at time dot height. Then below that, hit left square bracket to create a new array and inside the square brackets write w comma h. This expression says, look at target layer, which is our button text. Then use source rect at time to read its width and assign the width value to the variable w. Then use source rect at time to get the height and assign it to the variable h. Then output w on the x and h on the y. Click out of the expression editor and the box layer is now perfectly matching the size of our perfect button text layer. In the last lesson, I talked about the concept of destructuring and we can actually rewrite this expression to destructure the source rect at time object. Delete the last three lines and write const curly bracket left comma top comma width comma height close curly bracket equals target layer dot source rect at time. At the bottom, we can simply output width height. This works the same as what we just wrote before. But by using destructuring, we now have shorter expression code. Let's add padding to the box. With the box layer selected, go up to Effect, Expression Controls, Point Control. Drag it below box size and rename to box padding. Change these values to 25 by 25. Back in our expression, write const padding equals, and then pick whip the box padding control. On the last line, write width height plus padding. Now we have a padding control for our box that is separate from our box size control. Our box size is now perfectly rigged up and it will always be driven by the size of our text. But the rounded box layer still isn't following the position of the text layer. Select both layers and hit P on the keyboard to open up their positions. Pick whip the position of the box layer to example one's position. Now the box will follow the text layer around, but it's still not centered around the text. Delete the expression and then create a new variable for target layer and pick whip the text layer. Then create a second variable called target point and pick with the position of the text layer. We can output target point, and it's effectively the same as what we had before. We want to adjust the position to always auto center in the text layer. To do that, we can use source rect at time again. On a new line, write const curly bracket left top width height equals target layer dot source rect at time. Then at the bottom, write target point plus square bracket left plus width divided by two comma top plus height divided by two and close the square bracket. Commit this expression by clicking out of the editor and the box is now auto-centered around the text layer. We can change the text to anything that we want, add new lines, and even change the paragraph alignment. The box layer will now always magically follow the text layer. Let's take this to the next level and use parenting. Instead of directly referencing a target layer in an expression, we can just reference the layer's parent. Using the parenting pick whip, set the box layer's parent to the text layer. That throws our position way off course and it's ended up off screen. Turn off the expression for now and set the position to 0, 0. When we zero out the position, we can see that it lands at the baseline of the text layer. Any changes we make to box layer's position will be offsetting it from its parent. In the position expression, delete the lines for target layer and target point. Then delete target point at the bottom since that variable no longer exists in our expression. Instead of target layer dot source rect at time, we can write parent dot source rect at time. Click out of the expression editor and our box is now back in the correct position. We'll also change the box size to follow the parent. Double click the box size point control to open it in the timeline. Delete the first line for target layer and replace the target layer variable with parent. Because we've updated our expressions to be driven by the layer's parent, we can now create a brand new text layer, parent the box to that new layer, and the box will automatically update and follow the new layer instead. If I duplicate example one and box one, I can move example two and box two is automatically parented to it and will follow its every move. We can duplicate these again to create example three and box three. Each of these boxes follow their parents, but they each still have individual rounding controls, individual padding controls, and they can all be colored or manipulated independently. And that's how to add text to our button. I've created a preset for this that you can download in the description. After installing it, go to the effects and presets panel search four corners and double click it. 
The box size and position expressions are temporarily broken because they're searching for a target. Create a text layer named target layer and the box will snap to it. Now you can rename the layers and the expressions update automatically. On the box layer, I've neatly organized all the controls into a custom pseudo effect. All the controls are easy to change and it'll respond to your text layer. In the next lesson, I'll show you various ways to style the button. See you later.